This video is on the phenol red carbohydrate broth media. This is a differential media based on an organism's ability to ferment a specific sugar. So phenol red broths are typically done as a panel, a set of three, like you see in this image. One tube will only have the sugar glucose. The second tube will only have the sugar sucrose. And the third tube only has the sugar lactose. Now, let me kind of clarify what I just said. All the different things that a bacteria needs to grow are present in these broths, but the only sugar present is the, the one identified. So there's only one sugar in each of these tubes because we want to determine whether or not the organism can ferment that specific sugar. So as we've already said a few times this semester, fermentation produces acidic byproducts. So the pH of the media is going to decrease if the organism is able to ferment a given sugar. So as always, we need to be able to visualize that pH change. So we're gonna use a pH indicator, one that you're already pretty familiar with, which is phenol red. Under basic conditions, the media is a reddish color, but if fermentation happens and the pH decreases, the media is going to turn yellow. So your observations for this media, your observation options are red broth or yellow broth. You can phrase that as red media or yellow media if you want. But remember, your observation is always what you physically see. So all you can see when looking at this picture is the color of the media. And that was actually not entirely true because there's also a durum tube inside these test tubes. Okay? And that's what you're seeing here. Okay, So this is a durum tube. And what it does is it catches gas. So it turns out that some bacteria release gas as they do fermentation. It's just a natural byproduct for some organisms. Not all organisms, but some of them. So this durum tube provides us an extra piece of information. It not only will we be able to tell whether or not an organism can ferment a specific sugar or not, but we're able to tell whether or not it produces gas as a byproduct of fermentation. So think about what I just said. If an organism produces gas as a byproduct of fermentation, that means the only time you will get a gas bubble in this tube is if the organism can ferment a sugar. You will never see a gas bubble in a red phenol broth tube because red means fermentation did not happen. So if an organism can't ferment, then it can't release gas during fermentation, right? Because it can't do fermentation at all. So really the durum tube comes into play on any test tubes that have yellow broth in them when you take them out of the incubator, okay? So, we normally assume the organism does not ferment, I'm sorry, uh, we typically assume that the organism does not release gas during fermentation. So if you pull these tubes out of the incubator and you have a tube like the one in the middle, you can just say that you observe a yellow broth or yellow media. However, if you remove your tube from the incubator and it looks like the right hand tube, you would want to specify that you see a gas bubble in your observations. So you would say yellow broth with a gas bubble. Okay, so if your observation includes yellow media, you then will want to specify if gas was produced, if there's a gas bubble in the Durham tube. All right, so let's look at which sugars the eight unknown organisms can ferment, and you will need to know these results. So let's start at the top left. Okay, so there's Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and in this case, all three tubes are red. That means that Pseudomonas aeruginosa is negative for all three tubes. Remember, results are going to be positive or negative. So we have three negative tubes for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. 
So now we need to say, well, so what? What's the interpretation? Well, remember, red tubes, or a negative result, means that the organism cannot ferment that sugar. So we know that this organism cannot ferment glucose, it cannot ferment sucrose, nor can it ferment lactose. No fermentation for this organism. So now let's look at Proteus vulgaris. So first notice there's the three tubes. And if you look at the title of this slide, you'll notice that the left hand most tube is the glucose tube. The middle tube has sucrose and the right hand tube has lactose. So you'll notice that the glucose and sucrose tubes are yellow. That's your observation. An additional observation for that middle sucrose tube is the presence of a gas bubble. Your observation for that right hand tube is going to be red media. So think to yourself, what are the results of these tubes? If you go from left to right, you would say positive, positive, negative. Because remember, yellow is a positive result and red is a negative result. So what are the interpretations for Proteus vulgaris? The organism can ferment glucose, it can ferment sucrose, and it produces gas during that fermentation of sucrose, and it cannot ferment lactose. Now go ahead and apply what we've just been saying to the remaining images and make sure you understand uh, what the observations, results, and interpretations are for the remaining three scenarios. I do want you to notice that, uh, for instance, Salmonella, Proteus, Mirabilis, and Shigella flexneri, they all give the same phenol red results. So that means this would not be the best test to do when trying to identify an unknown organism. Because if you look at the bottom right tube, there are two organisms that give all yellow media with gas in each tube. So we don't actually include the phenol red broth test or media on our flow chart because there's just so many similarities here. But this is good to know for your quiz and your lab exam. And a good one to really practice um, differentiating observations, results, and interpretations. All right, y'all, that is the end of this video. Let me know if you have any questions.